Hiya and welcome to uh, session three of our um, Healthy Heart Happy You programme. So I hope you're sticking with it so far. If you, this is your first time of uh, tuning in to us, then go away, have a look at the other two, the first two that we've done, and then maybe you can follow it step by step, okay? So first week was you keeping a diet diary, second week was you planning for this week, okay? So let me go to that now. So you've planned out for this week, so we're on day whatever, most people start these things on a Monday, so well, whatever day you started it on, okay? So we're so many days in. Now, how easy or challenging has it been to stick to your diary that you've done for yourself your plan that you've made for yourself now if it was difficult to stick to or if you look at it and you think well actually I plan to eat this today and I plan to eat that uh, and I haven't done look why that has been now has it been because something's happened to your routine and it's got disrupted and then you need to think to yourself how often does that actually happen is that a, is that a regular occurrence is that something that's going to stop you from eating healthier um that you've been out and about or you've done something um and you know you've been working at home or whatever and you've got distracted whatever it may be and you haven't st stuck to your plan or is it because the meals that you've planned for yourself you're actually feeling you you're bored with it already or you're hungry um so have you underestimated the amount of energy that you actually need to support your daily living okay so it's all about being as realistic as you can for you and i think this is one of the really strongest things that i can tell you ever to do is to plan all right um, as that saying goes, and I'll probably say it to you again and again and again, okay, to fail to plan is to plan to fail. Now, you won't have to do this forever. You won't have to be writing down, okay, ne next week I'm going to eat this, this and this. But it's really good starting tool because it gets you thinking about, first of all, what you need to go shopping for, all right? So if you're thinking about planning this week for next week, and then you think, okay, what foods, what ingredients, what do I need to make that happen and make that easy and make sure that I've got in the fridge and in the cupboards everything that you possibly need for every eventuality. So little snack things, um, you know, you can do far worse than chopping up a bowl of salad stuff um, and just having it in a tub in your fridge. So anytime you're feeling a bit hungry, a bit munchy, go and munch, you know, munching on uh, cherry tomatoes or carrot sticks or cucumber sticks or, you know, slices of pepper um, and you're nibbling on those. If you are a nibbler and a grazer and you like to eat in between meals, they are absolutely fantastic things to have, as you probably agree. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about, you know, special conditions, um, that might require different kinds of eating because this this eating plan is actually for everybody but you have to tailor it to your needs now I suffer from IBS I know quite a few of you do uh, I know some of you have different um, you know conditions that maybe mean that you have to miss out foods that I'm you know saying that you should include and sometimes it's those things can be in your diet but little and often perhaps all right so for a good example of that increasing your fiber intake too quickly if you do have ibs that can really upset everything and it can set you back for weeks so we just do it slowly all right so the first week you know i said to you task for this week is to make sure that you have a breakfast in place okay so keep that going now if that's upset you your system a little bit keep that going for a bit longer and concentrate on tidying up very gently your other uh, meals during the day and then what we're going to do is start adding in different things and adding in and taking away things that we don't actually want or need in our diet so this is more about adding in okay what we can add in and why we need to add it in and why it'd be good to do so i will talk about the the mediterranean diet and what i want you to do is look at your plan for this week so we've addressed the fact that if you're not sticking to it already was it realistic that's really really important and key so there's only you knows all right so what you need to do is decide on what you're going to have for next week now again in addition to <laughs> doing that there's always a bit more there's always an add-on those of you who do my classes and my pilates yeah 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 you can't stick with the basics you've got to add on all right so we're going to add on so you all know about the mediterranean diet and what that is i wish we had the mediterranean climate climate that would be really really nice and helpful for us wouldn't it um and so a lot of big studies you know with thousands and thousands of people uh, have been conducted with the mediterranean diet in different um, countries 
different climates, you know, different uh, populations. And never once has there been seen to be any detrimental effects with following this diet, okay? Following this style of diet. The benefits for um, primary prevention, so before you've got heart disease, are out there, you know, increasing your fruit and vegetable intake, reducing your um, saturated fats and your um, things like red meat, we're reducing that down and all these kind of things. Now, again, I've been asked in the past, am I a vegetarian and do I advocate a vegetarian diet? No, 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 not at all. Everything in moderation. However, there are things in our diets that are, you know, in the Western diet that we can get hold of really quickly, really easily. And we're used to, you know, having those in our meals and snacking on. So we're just putting a different kind of slant on it. Now, in secondary prevention, which is where you guys are, I know from experience and from doing my research that you are already following a lot of this advice. OK, so some of it is it's all stuff, you know, and you're doing already. So in that case, what I would do to you, what I would say to you is that if you're following this program for a reason, you're wanting to eat healthier, just reevaluate your diet and see how many things that you think you might have in and you think you might be doing everything and maybe you're not doing quite as well as you should do okay and that won't be for everybody and remember that the biggest thing about this it's not primarily a weight loss program now if you do want to lose weight we're going to follow this up every week if you're following this you will start to lose weight okay so if you're introducing these kind of foods in and then if not like I've said before drop me an email and we'll look at your personal situation so we'll look at your basic metabolic rate uh, and you might have to do a bit of calorie counting. OK, so, you know, to be a little bit more strict with your portion sizes and that kind of thing until we've readjusted it. So if you're not wanting to lose weight, that's fine. Carry on. If you are, then carry on with this. And if things don't start moving the way you want them to, then we'll have a little bit more in depth. Now, the fantastic news is we've got on board. Um, you already know Kieran. OK, who's been doing some brilliant videos and, and he's really, really passionate about healthy eating. And um, so he's on board with us as well with this. So we'll be putting in some clips from him. We've also got Lynn. Some of you might have met her before. Um, she's a third year student now going into a third year. And this is part of her studies is working alongside us with this program. So that she's going to help to develop it. And then we've got Hajira who's coming along. Now she's going into year one. She's been on my foundation year. And again, she's really, really passionate about healthy eating, about Asian cooking and how to get Asian cooking, you know, healthier, but just generally healthy eating. So all three of them might be popping on videos for you so you're not getting bored with my mug. Um, so we, we and they're also going to be doing some um, cooking. I know Kieran can't wait to get started on that. Doing some cooking and you know healthy eating recipes to to give you some ideas so you can have a you can have a go along with them and maybe try things that you haven't tried before. Okay, so Mediterranean diet. There's been some massive massive studies you know done like I said before, and you know what what the major characteristics are is a high consumption of fruit and vegetables. Okay, of um, cereals. Now, you know, you're having cereals for, for breakfast cereals, for example. A lot of the breakfast cereals are either whole grain, whole wheat, which is what we want, um, or they've been fortified or some of them are whole wheat, whole um, grain, and been fortified as well with extra vitamins and minerals, which is always a really good thing because, you know, you're getting those without even thinking about it. OK, so... You know, like like your porridge or um, you know your bran or or whatever it may be that that you have for your for your breakfast. Fruit and vegetables, of course. Vegetables are really really important. So are fruit. The more, most important thing uh, around those is the variety. Try different types, different varieties of vegetables. Don't always think about boiling them. I'm I'm a real lover of steaming my vegetables, whether it be from from the freezer or fresh. I use a lot of frozen vegetables just because it's easier for me to keep them and quite often they're actually a bit healthier than uh, fresh because fresh, if, again, like me, if you buy a cauliflower, I might bung it in the fridge, forget about it and, you know, it might be five or six days later when I think, oh, I need to use that cauliflower up. 
all the time that it's there, it's actually losing its essential uh, nutrients that are in there, okay? Not all of them, of course, but some. So frozen, it's frozen from fresh, so sometimes it's fresher than, you know, having it sitting around the house. Because in the shops, we don't know how long it's been there either, do we? So, all right, so for a nice variety. Um, things like um, beans, pulses, you know, um, you know, adding mixed beans or kidney beans or something to recipes is absolutely fantastic way of getting uh, these, you know, into your diet and you don't really notice that they're there. Um, things like nuts and most importantly, olive oil. OK, now, again, there's some research to say that um, extra virgin olive oil is, of course, the supremo, the gold standard, the, you know, the best. All right. Um, other more refined or processed uh, types of olive oil may not be as wonderful as that, but they're certainly better than um, a lot of other oils that you can have. OK, so a way to see how um, Mediterranean your diet actually is is by looking at this little baby now i've sent this with the email some of you will be familiar with this already so if you've joined in on one of the studies um you'll know this excuse me while i have a little slurp and i cannot believe i asked google is it going to rain today and she said no i've put my washing out i've just looked out at window it's pouring down <sighs> cheers staying there in it we're busy all right so mediterranean diet score sheet so i'm i'm gonna let you look at it in more detail on your own however i'm gonna point out a couple of things that i know came up when we were doing this you know on a one-to-one -one in person with people we've just talked about um olive oil okay now olive oil has been seen to help to reduce cholesterol levels so um your HDL LDL ratio improves and your LDLs be reduced. Okay, so a really fantastic way of getting um, your cholesterol under control is by adding in the olive oil. So, in the Mediterranean diets, it's been seen. I mean, we're supposed to have around about 35% of our total diet is, is from uh, fats. OK, if you wanted to lose weight, we can reduce that all the way down to as low as 20 uh, percent. However, the type and quality that you have is really, really, really important. OK, so having olive oil and using that, don't don't be afraid to use it for your frying, for your cooking, for drizzling on your salads. OK, so long as the rest of your fat in your diet is limited. OK, so that makes sense. We're going to get fat from the fish. We're going to get fat from, um, you know, some some dairy if we're having that in, in moderate amounts. Um, if we do have a bit of red meat, we'll have some fat in there. And that's fine. I mean, some saturated fat in your diet is OK if it's saturated natural like that from from the red meats. OK, if it's from bacon and sausage and pies and cakes and biscuits, that's that's you know, we want to limit those as much as we possibly can. So on your form, it says our olive oil, rapeseed oil, peanut oil or rice bran oil, the main oil that you use to prepare your food in cooking or on salads. OK, so if you mainly use vegetable oil, um, sunflower oil and they're your main ones, but occasionally you use a bit of olive oil or rapeseed oil, then the answer to this question is no. If you mostly use any of the oils that are written down there, OK, if you mostly use those, then the answer is yes. And sometimes you might do a bit of sunflower oil or vegetable oil. OK, so that's really important. And then the next one, number two, is do you use four tablespoons or more? Now, most people were horrified at that when I've asked this because they're like, we've been taught low fat, low fat, low fat. OK. So you only score a yes if you think you use about four tablespoons. Now, it's, it is, if this is your only oil, it is quite easy to do that. So if you decided you're going to uh, put a bit of olive oil in your pan before you, you brown your meat or brown your vegetables or cook an egg, then it's quite easy to get, you know, some olive oil in there. If you're using it for, um, you know, baking or making dressings or anything like that, you know, then 
that's what uh, that's what we're sort of saying so you only get a yes if you think you have four tablespoons each day all right sounds a lot but it's beneficial to you the fruit and vegetables you know those and again if you've got any questions on those it gives you samples of you know portion sizes what a portion size actually looks like and so on and so forth okay the next one that people ask um, a lot about is the drinking all right so if you drink spirits or beer the answer is a no okay if you drink wine you've got red rosy or white the answer is yes all right if you have it in the in the volumes that it, that it asks you to do okay so spirits and things no if you don't drink at all that's that's absolutely fine now the reason you get a yes for this is because a sm small amount of wine preferably with your meal has been seen to be beneficial it's been seen to almost have an omega-3 effect on how your body sort of reacts with the wine and with your food okay so that isn't to say that if you don't drink now you should start drinking okay don't start drinking if you don't know if you don't drink if you do drink and you 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 know prone to a, a little tipple here and there maybe substitute that for a glass of wine so again it still gives you your amount here you can't just drink wine willy-nilly all right so you've just got to have it in moderation okay um so the rest of them i think are uh, straightforward now then toss up your score and see how many you get when you've done this obviously the more you score you get a, a one point for yes and a zero for no the more points you get obviously the better your diet is in terms of being healthier for heart health and being more equated to the mediterranean diet okay with nuts please see when it says um one serving is 30 grams so about two tablespoons of unsalted nuts. So a big bag of salted peanuts or pistachios. No, that doesn't count. Okay. Per week. All right. So I kind of have my nuts. I, I like Brazil nuts and walnuts. Um, I like them all, but I, I have those. Um, so Brazil nuts and walnuts. I have them in my little tub. I take out one a day and pop that in. Okay. Like it's a tablet. So when I'm taking my tablets, I'll do that. All right. So don't be tempted to have a fistful, <laughs> okay, because, yeah, it's good fat, yeah, it's good fibre, yeah, it's fantastic protein, yeah, it's high in calories, okay. So you've just got to be careful with things like that. And I know nuts are really, really Moorish, okay. So don't get too carried away. All right. So I think the rest of that is quite uh, self-explanatory. So... We'll do this now and then probably in a couple of weeks then you can do your um, Mediterranean diet score sheet again and see if you've changed at all. Now um, if I if I remember rightly a two point increase really significantly reduces your risks of further um, development of, of the heart disease basically. So if you can improve your diet by two points You've, you've gone a really, really long way to making those changes. And it's keeping those changes up. So every so often, be really truthful and realistic with yourself. Go back to doing a diet diary, writing everything that you eat and drink, and then having a look at the Mediterranean diet score sheet and see, are you keeping on track? Like I say, if you do want to lose weight, then we need, we need a little bit more specific. Um, this might well help you to lose weight because it's helping you to focus on what you're eating okay and what you should be having so anything that's white in your diet uh, unless you've been told by your doctor that you need to specifically include these things in your diet then they need to go so white bread white rice white pasta okay white potatoes fantastic as long as you're not having a, a shed load uh, at meal times as so long as you're eating them, you know, with something like tuna or something that's that's packed with protein, you know, um, cottage cheese, something like that to help slow down how fast that gets into your system with, the, you know, with the glycemic index. So this kind of diet is fantastic for um, type 2 diabetics as well to help in to keep your uh, blood sugars level because of the whole grain, whole wheat and the effects that those have. Now, when we were doing... Um, my analysis of the 
research that I've just uh, not long finished, what, what it showed us that, that vitamin D, okay, B vitamins, calcium, were all lower than they should have been, okay. Now that's not um, specific to you guys, actually that is quite a big thing population wise, that that's, that's quite uh, common, okay. So what we need to do really is be thinking about how we can improve that. So eating the Mediterranean diet really is beneficial for getting those uh, vitamins into your body as well. If you look at something like vitamin D, sorry, I do have to write myself notes because I forget where I'm going. I wander off on a tangent. So something like vitamin D, if you're following a Mediterranean diet, one of the main things is, as I say, basing all your meals really starting from the vegetables that you've got in. OK, so a wide variety of vegetables from salad vegetables to, you know, like broccoli and cauliflower and, you know, things like that. Try everything weird and wonderful in between as well. So we're increasing the vegetable intake and think of those first before you start adding anything else. And the idea is to increase the your fish content. Now, something like oily fish may be to one to two portions of oily fish a week, but then you've got lots of other fish that's not classed as oily fish. So your oily, you know, what is it? Salmon, mackerel, tuna. Um, what else have we got? They're the main ones that come to me to, to my head anyway. Um, so you've got your oily fish types. You've got sardines and, you know, all, all the other things. But you can also include, you know, like cod, haddock, place, all these kind of things. Now with haddock, be careful with the smoked haddock, okay? If you're going to have a smoky one, have it really lightly smoked it's because it's lower in salt. So you've just got to be aware with, this, with the salt content of that. There's always a, a flip side, isn't there? But vitamin D comes from from a lot of those foods. OK, so if you're thinking, um, you know, how can I imp improve my vitamin D intake? We know that vitamin D is a sunshine vitamin. Hello, rainy. OK, we also know as we get older. So once you've passed the age of 50, your skin doesn't synthesize it quite the same as it used to do. Also, some medications that you're, you're on might counteract the way that your body is able to absorb it. All right. So if we can um, and synthesize it, sorry, within your body. So if we can, you know, increase our intake dietary wise, then we're going to be helping that a little bit as well. But you can also get vitamin D from things like egg yolks. OK, um, some low fat spreads might be. Um, what's it called? Substituted or. Mm, added in <laughs> vitamin D <laughs> you know what you know what word I mean so the, the fortified <laughs> that's that's it fortified with vitamin D okay um, and you know so you also get some cereals as well so cereals and some spreads might have vitamin D added to them as well okay so they're good things apparently one thing I didn't know portobello mushrooms have a quite high um, vitamin D content as well who would have thought so anyway if you use those, then whack those in as well. Your calcium levels. We think of calcium being from milk and dairy products, cheese, that kind of thing. But also from things like soybeans, your oily fishes, again, you know, like sardines, salmon, trout, that kind of thing, are packed with calcium. But also things like spinach and kale, okra, you know, so all those absolutely fabulous. Whack those into your diet. OK, so I think I've probably held you here long enough um for now i'm just going to check i've not missed out anything now a good thing to do at this stage would be perhaps to even if you're not wanting to lose weight or change your body shape because you don't you don't feel that you need to with the waist circumference that's one of the main sort of measurements that we think of as being detrimental to heart health specifically OK, the, the bigger your waist circumference, the more likely you are to develop things like type 2 diabetes, um, increase your risk of um, further development of, of heart disease and so on. OK, so there's lots of different sort of mechanisms behind that. So if you wanted to measure your waist, so pop your tape measure round your body and to your tummy button okay so I always you'll see if you look up online there'll be different ways of doing it you know one centimeter above your tummy button and, and this that and the other but I always go around your tummy button so measure that only you need to see that okay so you can measure it in inches measure it in centimeters that's absolutely fine but 
measure it. You could also measure your hips if you wanted to as well. So with your hips, you need to basically stand with your feet together, okay? Pop the tape measure around the widest part of your buttocks and your hips, and you'll probably get your tummy in there as well, okay? So if you're doing it right, you've got your bum, your hips, and your tummy. Measure that and keep those measurements. You can hop on the scales if you want to. When you hop on the scales, it's first thing in the morning, after you've been to bathroom, before you've had anything to eat, okay? And that's your, your true weight, so you've got no clothes on, okay? And that's your, your true weight. I don't want you to get too hung up on um, weighing yourself and things, but it's just nice to have that there, and then you can see after a few weeks of doing this, has anything changed, okay? If you really want it to and it isn't doing, that's when you drop us an email and one of the team will, will get back to you and help you on a, on a more one-to-one. -one. Once we manage to get back into Heartbeat, we'll have almost like a clinic there each week. So you can bob in to see us and we'll hold the workshops again where you get to try all the different foods and we go through all the, you know, whys and wherefores of what you should have. So they reckon that one serving of fruit and veg um, per day is associated with 4% decrease in coronary heart disease risk, okay? So keep that in mind. Two point increase in the Mediterranean diet score sheet, okay? So this beautiful, colorful little thing, a two point increase is seen with a 9% reduction in overall mortality, okay? So really worth doing. For one centimeter that your waist measurement is above where it should be, and I'll pop that in the email as to what, what they should be so you can see where yours are, okay? Um, so one centimetre increase is associated with a 5% increase in your future cardiovascular uh, events, okay? So really important we think about those. Even if you look like your normal weight and normal size and you're happy with yourself, have a look at these measurements and just see what they actually say about you. So we know that what we call visceral fat that's around your tummy, okay? we know that that is associated with um, greater incidence of coronary heart disease. Okay, so challenges this week. Get your points done on your Mediterranean diet score sheet. Keep your planning up. Don't give up on that yet. Plan, maybe write a new shopping list with these Mediterranean style foods in there because you've got that sheet now and you can see what kind of foods and you think well actually I never really add beans to anything what can I do with them a can of mixed beans chopped up with a load of salad veg drizzled with a little bit of olive oil um I sometimes use the uh, uh mustard um you know the whole grain mustard with the seeds in a bit of that a bit of olive oil a bit of lemon in there drizzle that over the top of your, your salad with all with this these mixed beans a can of mixed beans drained, washed, sorted, in there, fantastic, so filling, so tasty, you wouldn't even believe it, okay, so give that a whirl, and when you're having your bit of salad, whack that in. There is a thing on there about uh, processed meats as well, and some of you were a little bit shocked to know that, you know, when you're buying ham and chicken and things in the packets, that's all processed meat as well, so perhaps substitute that for a bit of chicken or a bit of tuna or, you know, a bit of fish, something like that fantastic all right so i will see you again next week i would think um and we'll hope to have some videos from the other guys who are uh, a bit more dynamic and wonderful and can't wait for you to to get involved with them as well all right thanks very much thank you for your time good luck go out there let's get them let's get this healthy eating underway okay see you soon Bye bye